Yeah, so when I was here, I think this was just Watch. getting installed. Yeah. So when you when you walk, so you can kind of see the variety. So this where it looks more anemic, you have a, a little bit of orihona. And then when you get in here, you start to see dark star and... Um, I think we have some PG in there. We try to, we try to plan a pipeline so each variety. And they were separated 10 feet, 8 feet? Six. Seven. Six feet? Six feet. Six, six, six I think. And you like this distance? Uh, yeah, I think that's perfect. Because I was yeah. doing 10 and it seems a little bit uh, yeah, too, much. too much. Yeah. So seven is what you do. Yeah, do. this is seven. We this, got enough space to walk in the middle. The spacing on a field like this is, is really good. And then the only thing that we debated yeah. is it, we would have taken our posting down even lower. Mm -hmm. So we always say the top of the post at four feet and those were done five Five feet. Five feet. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm five seven. So you can kind of right. So that's really. Yeah, I'm doing mine. And uh, they're right about here. So like that's four and a half feet is where. Four, that's four, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I always thought I'm a little short, but it works for me. Yeah. So you wish that these were a little lower. Uh, yeah. no. I mean, and here is fine. Uh -huh. But right now, everything that we start replacing right now, we start doing it at four feet. Yeah. And you, I remember you're building these at a certain uh, cost, and yeah. you were you had it down to like. 30 yeah. bucks or something like that. And it was a, it yeah. was a good cost. I, I think we were, I think it, 13, oh, 13, 13, I think. 13? Yeah. Okay, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Wow, yeah. that's a good, So we, we had to just um, buy more wood for the forms and it happened to be when the wood prices were high, but um, we we were doing 24 forms, 24, yeah. but now we have thir 32. 32 forms. So you're still producing the same yeah, concrete yeah. structures, same length and the same height and everything? Uh, no, uh, we're taking a feet down now. You're a little shorter? Yeah. And how far do they go into the ground? Three feet. Three Those feet? Those are three feet. Okay. Yeah. So the post you're looking at was in a form that was eight, eight foot, feet. And then it was sunk down three feet. So okay. you, you end up with the post out of ground about, um, about five feet. And then we cut the form down to seven feet. Um, and because they go three down. And, and they go three down. down That's perfect. Four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Okay, so Leonardo is going to explain his their new trellis design. As you can see, what I really like about it is that the wood is above the soil. And so Leo, tell us a little bit about it. It looks like you use these six foot posts. Yes, uh, I use this um, to anchor to anchor the posts. I use this this setup. Uh, if I use a four by four um, piece of uh, lumber. I use I sandwich it to two of this U line, U U post, and then uh, at least you have to put uh, four screws. To you sandwich four it. screws, two or, posts, and you yeah. make sure that the post level. Right, so you're gonna level it. Yes, but before you do that, uh, you have to pound this with a post pounder to anchor it to the ground. And it goes in what 18 inches or so up to about here. Yes, feet? about 18, 20 inches. Okay. It depends to the to the type of the soil. Some, sometimes it's soft, so make it deeper. Uh -huh. And what's the how wide is this? What's the width? So the material I use this uh, U post uh, two by four by eight and uh, four by four by eight. And then the four by four by eight you have to divide it in half, so it's four four, four feet. feet. And then the two by four. You divide them in three, so it's 32 inches for one piece. You need two pieces of two by four by eight. And uh, I use, uh, how many pieces are there? There's, there? There are six of them. And so then there's zero waste, yes, right? You, don't, yes. you just cut them up and don't have to waste any material. Cut them exactly 32 inches each. Especially and with the price of lumber right now, that's smart. That's a good, good to not waste yeah, it. Yeah, don't waste them. And then you have to use uh, dex, dex screws. Uh, how long uh, are they? Two, two, two and a half inch, or you can use three inches. Okay, two and a half to three inch. Yeah. And then the biggest benefit is having the post, the wooden post above the soil line, so yeah. that way you're not going to get rot. Right. And so this will this will last so much longer. And you have to uh, use uh, at least four deck screws here, two and a half or two inches deck screws, sandwich to, sandwich to this. Four by four. It's a great design. I like yes. it. Show us the um, also on that one down there. You did the cord. How you ran the cord through? Can we look at that? Oh yeah, yeah. And then you have to put to, uh, so that when the the, the 
vine goes up here and uh, and it shoots some branches it, this will help to support the br uh, branches and i like how you used your rubber hose yeah the rubber hose to support the plant the so that way yeah. the the wire won't break the yeah. branch you just need uh two straight uh line here and uh, from from here to this distance is seven inches same thing on the other side so that it will look neat, neater yeah it's efficient it's yeah, really like efficient design a lot. and easy to put together yeah 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 you could do it one person by yourself oh yeah i did this by myself that doesn't take so long and you have to uh, at least you have to use uh, 25 gallon spots using this system so 25 gallon is the yeah, size of this that's okay. the smallest you can use don't use 20 or or less than 25 gallons and how many plants do you put four i'm planning to put four here in each side and uh, as you suggested paul i have to put burlap here yeah i thought maybe wrapping it in burlap would yeah. help a lot especially around the metal so during the winter time you won't get any damage on the plant younger plants the younger yes branches. and the, the the area roots will attach to it well, I really like this design, so thanks for sharing it with us. We're up at the 2019 Dragon Fruit Festival up in Irvine. And they're doing an education seminar, just teaching you things. Um, right here is what they have is an experiment section where they're experimenting with different types of watering. So some of these dragon fruits are getting lots of water and some are getting hardly any water. And they're just doing experiments on how they're growing. They also have two different types of trellis systems. So we got a more of a wire system on this side where they have a single, just a single wood column on the other side. So as you can see, some of these are in different stages of uh, healthiness. And some are doing really well and some are kind of atrophied. So they're basically just doing water experiments and trellis system experiments. And uh, there's one that didn't do so well, like a skeleton. But some of these are really lush. Some have a uh, fruit set. Here's a good clumping of fruit. Um, but as you can see, some are barely making it. More water. Hey everybody, this is Paul, and today I'm gonna to show you how I build a permanent dragon fruit trellis. I use concrete, rebar, and four inch drain pipe, and I'll show you all the steps, and I'll show you why. I mean, you can see how sturdy it is. I have one of my hybrids here, and these things just don't break. I mean, you can see here it's 4S, and it's just something that's very permanent, a permanent solution, because we get some winds here, and I don't want them to fall over and get top heavy. So you can see here's the older design, Spicy Exotics design, and this is where it's in a hollow orange drain pipe. And what happens is in time, they just bend over. And you can see after a few years, I did these in 2019, they almost just kind of flex at the base. So I had to start using a bamboo post to keep them level. But as the plant gets heavier, you can see it just bends more and more and more. And so this is not a good long-term solution and I don't want to use wood because I, I just want these to get really large and just hold hundreds of pounds. So you, you've you iterated these dragon fruit trellises a bunch of times. So what, what version are you on? How many times have uh, you reassessed what, how you made them? Probably like three or four times. I've tried three inch drain pipe, which I thought was a little thin. And I noticed that four inch drain pipe is better because I can put four cuttings in a pot. So this is a 20 gallon pot and I put four on a four inch drain pipe. It seems to work really well. I have some three inch drain pipes down there and they're just too narrow. So that one inch larger diameter is key. Maybe we can put all the parts in the description. Yeah, kind of we can do that, no problem. And so let's go through the steps and I'll show you how I build these. Let's go get started. Okay, so step one is selecting the correct location. So I'm about seven to 10 feet from other pots. And most of my trellises are about 10 feet apart. Some are about seven feet, but that's the minimum. So how deep are you gonna go? I go about two feet. 
So step one is you want to dig a hole about two feet deep. And I expect to use about 100 to 120 pounds of concrete. Okay. So let me get this dug and I'll show you the next step. Okay, I have the hole dug and this is my tool of choice here. And what I buy is half inch rebar at 10 feet. So this is a 10 foot piece. I cut it with a bimetal cutting blade and then I make, I use, I use it to cut a six foot piece, which will be the main spine, I guess you could say, main support, which I'm about to hammer it into the hole. And then these will be the cross beams. So that's why I like to buy 10 foot sections because I don't have any waste. And then I use half inch um, drip line and I sheath it. So that way you'll see why, because that way I can remove them from the top and interchange them or move the plants. So I have the rebar, I hammer it in until it's about four feet in height. Try to keep it centered and level. That looks about good. So it's about four foot, one inch. So one more hit. There we go. Next up, this is the four inch triple wall drain pipe. And I cut this to a six foot piece. You can see it's too tall. So now I'm gonna trim it back just a bit. And I usually go one inch beyond the rebar. So the rebar is five feet in height. So now I'll cut this five foot one. So 61 inches. I'm using that same metal blade. There we go. Next up, I put in a four inch cap. And I use this drill bit, it's a unibit. I go straight through. I'll let that whip you in the face. I try to make it a 90 degree angle. But I just eyeball it. Sometimes I go through the, the uh, cap twice, but usually I just go right under it. And there we go. So now I have that done. Now it's time to get to the concrete. So let me get the concrete ready and show you the next step. So what I like to use is the fast setting concrete and I'll use anywhere from 100 pounds to 120 pounds per pot, per trellis. And the reason why I like How many this, bags is that, like two? Two, a little over two, depending on the hole. But usually two is plenty. And what I like to do is mix it up really well. It's definitely too wet there. Yeah, you don't need much. You just need a bucket and some water. Yep. And a stick. Nice. Don't want to breathe it, by the way. It's really bad to breathe the dust. And I like to have it kind of like consistent and similar to cake batter. That's great, Neil. Definitely more on the thinner side. So next, I like to fill up the base first. Oh, we can just dump it. And use the rebar. Get any of the holes, air hole pockets out of there. And work it in. And again, this is fast setting, so it'll set pretty quick. You wanna make sure it's nice and level before the concrete sets. That's very important. And it does set pretty quickly. Then, I like to use the rebar. Ooh. 
And that'll kind of help keep it where I want it to. I think in this case, probably something like that. Okay. There we go, nice and level. And you'll want to check that a few times. And just fill it up. Makes a very cool sound when it plops down. And it takes about one bag to fill up this kind of drain pipe. So around 50 pounds of concrete. Yeah, once you do this a few times, it gets pretty easy. Yeah, and you want to pull that rebar and get it in the center. Okay, so I filled it up and now time is of the essence. So the first step down here is the concrete. You want to make a nice level base. That way it'll prevent any gophers from entering the pot. And you'll see I'll cover this with some dirt and allow the roots to grow into the soil. So having a nice level base is really important like that there. Now, I'm gonna double check, make sure it's still level. Yep. Perfect. And now you don't wanna wait too long. Before it hardens, you don't want it to harden, that'd be bad. Just put the cap on. And then insert these straight through. And this half inch drain pipe, drip irrigation line, excuse me, is key because it acts as like a sleeve. And so as it cures in the next hour or so, I'll just turn it like this every so often. And it'll just form your mold so you can put that in later. Makes the perfect mold, exactly. Let's make sure it's still level. It's the most important step. Yep. And so now, over here, you can see what it looks like when it's done. So, I've added the dirt. The concrete pad is still under there. And then now, I'm going to finish the top. So you can see that these will still go in and out after it dries relatively easily. So sometimes it's bent or curved, so you might have to flip it over, but there we go. So you can see how easy it goes back on. You can see for the 20 gallon pot, I like to drill a lot of holes. And I put that nice open center in it. Put it down. And then I like to use this wire mesh you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. It comes in a big eight foot by four foot or something like that. And I think I make four out of them on each piece. So I cut them and tie them down with zip ties and it looks like this over here and it's done. And then you add the burlap. Yep. So I like to build the top and then I add a, plenty of burlap around it. Why do you add the burlap? That way the aerial roots will have something to grab onto. I've seen some people use uh, sandpaper to make it more rough, the PVC, and you can do that as well. Okay. But I prefer to just let it be and put plenty of burlap on it. And I just use some larger zip ties or you could use wire or twine. And there you go. Next step, I, was, I like to form a little base of perlite. So I add a perlite about four inches and then put in potting soil and it's good to go. And so after a while, I'm gonna redo all these that's down this whole row, and I'll show you what his Laverne Pink looks like when it's all said and done. So something like this. And then time, some of the older ones will just get those aerial roots and really just- Yeah, you have an example of the aerial roots? Or is there's, uh, there's some here. You can see how they're going in Some of my older burlap. pots, I've moved most of them, so not in this section. That's a good example. Yeah. And there you go, and they're sturdy. They can take a lot of weight and I don't have to worry about them falling in the winds or anything, and I couldn't be happier. So I'm getting rid of all the white ones, and they're all gonna be 20 gallon black pots. And you can see, I've probably done 80 of these already, or yeah, something like that. Yeah, you're experimenting so, so other people don't have to. 
Yep, so that, that's been working really well for me. I'll never have to deal with rot or have any problems. So there you go. And the cool thing about this is we actually repurposed some uneven bars that my stepdad had made for the kids that they don't really use anymore. So we were looking at it and this was just two bunch of poles basically in the ground that weren't being used. So we thought, you know what, we'll just transition this over to a really cool dragon fruit trellis system. So let's check out what we got. It does get really hot here in Escondido. So since this is a metal trellis, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it with a little bit of burlap, which will help with the dragon fruit being able to climb up the trellis, as well as maybe minimizing a little bit of that heat in the summertime. So a little more room, we're gonna probably wrap, continue to wrap it as it goes down. But for right now, this should serve its purpose pretty well. All right, so the first one we got here is uh, what we call the unknown road. And this has a really, uh, interesting history we actually found this dragon fruit on the side of the road paul did and uh, we we looked into a little of the history of this one and the gentleman that had owned it had owned it for like 30 years and it was growing in his yard for for so long that it overtook a shed and almost knocked it over so we know this is a very old old dragon fruit and uh it is some sort of white flesh um some sort of undatus but not exactly sure what to call it so we call it unknown road but it's very uh, sun tolerant very hardy and it'll be great here in Escondido all right so the second one we have is also in Datus. I have grown one fruit off of this type of dragon fruit I have it in my yard but this is a nice cutting that I'm gonna gift to my mom and have her set up right here we did try the fruit it was really good pretty good size nice sweetness but nothing super special, but also a very vigorous grower and should be really fantastic in the nice warm weather that we have over here. All right, so up next, this is Dark Star, which is a hybrid Guatemalensis and Undatus. And this one is more of a purple flesh, really good, super vigorous. We've done videos on this kind that grow so super fast. Check out some of the videos on our channel. We did a little document of a pretty small cutting growing from basically uh, about 18 inches to a whole trellis in 18 months. So really, really cool, very vigorous. This is rated as having one of the better tasting fruit and super delicious dark star. All right, so the last one is uh, Sugar Dragon. And we like to include Sugar Dragon on most of the setups because of the universal pollination factor. And this is a really nice cutting here. It's ready to grow. This is also Guatemalensis. It's a smaller, smaller fruit, but very sweet. Tastes excellent. And should do really well in the warm weather over here. So Sugar Dragon. Right, this is really exciting. This will be a nice setup in a few years. Should be able to get Plenty of uh, trellis coverage, and this is a pretty much a full sun environment here in Escondido. So give us a like and a subscribe, and catch you again next time.